Here's part three of our conversation with Mike Levine of Triumph. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. Uh, Magic Power, like a song like that. I always look at you and I'm going, you got, you got Gil over here and you, you got the two lead singers, you know. And uh, I, I bugged Rick about this <laughs> now that I, I, I talk to him now and then. Because I told him when I saw him the first time, I'm going, there's this blonde guy, great, he's like the most gorgeous guy I've ever seen in my life. I don't like guys, but that's a beautiful man. And I'm going, he's got a star doing his thing. And I'm going, I wonder if he's high maintenance. And, and, it's, and I didn't mean it out of disrespect. I'm, I'm going, and I thought of you and I went, okay, you've got these two lead singers you're, 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 uh, you're dealing with. But for the most part, did you guys get along pretty well? Because you, you stayed together quite a long time. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we had a lot of fun. You know, but the, the good news is we laughed a lot. And uh, without that, you know, we wouldn't have lasted at all. Because it's a grind, you know, and uh, you, you're trying to, you know, balance your family life with your road life, with your recording life, uh, which is not easy to do. But, you know, you, when you went on the road, you put on your road hat. When you came home, you threw your, your road hat in the road case and forgot about it. And, uh, but then you had to record. So you got a, a little window of, of real life. And then <laughs> recording was pretty good. Even touring, you know, at that point in time, I think we were pretty much only doing maybe what we averaged 4.3 shows a week or something like that. And we'd come home. Like if we played Sunday night, we'd be on a plane Monday morning coming home. We wouldn't go out again until Wednesday or Thursday. So we were able to maintain that we didn't stay on the road. We didn't use a tour bus, for example. We always flew or drove in a car. So... Um, you know, we were able to, to see our families and, and, and be normal for a few days, okay, a week. I think the longest we were ever away was we went to Europe uh, for a couple of weeks. And uh, one time in the States, we didn't come home one week. So we were out for 10, 12 days or something like that. See, I never yeah. would have thought of that in a million years. The fact that, that, that you guys were able to have some semblance of normal life during that speed, that like, go, go, go. And yeah, well, it was, it was, we just decided, hey, it was tough. A three piece band is rough on you anyway, especially vocally. So, uh, and also, nobody goes to, don't like to go to shows on Mondays or Tuesdays. So we said, you know what? Like, why go into Peoria on a Monday and do a half a house or three quarters of a house when everybody's got to go to work tomorrow, or go to school or whatever? Um, so we didn't really play many Mondays or Tuesdays. You know, it was just dead days. The crew, uh, really didn't like it because they ended up stabbing us, just lay low in a hotel for a, for a few days waiting for us. Uh, they enjoyed the time off, of course, but, you know, they're out there to work as well. Brad K says, same question I ask all these guys. Why did, what did you do for a living when you were not in Triumph? What, what like? Oh, God. Well, um, before Triumph, I was, uh, uh, I was doing commercials, writing and producing jingles. Did that before that? I was worked at a, uh, with a record company, the record label, small small independent label from Toronto. But we had a distribution in the states, so I got to travel to New York as twenty one year old and meet incredible people, incredible Lieber and Stoller, uh, you know, it's a Freddie Beanstalk, uh, Teddy Randazzo, uh, Brooks Arthur, one of the greatest engineers of all time. You know, I to meet all these people and talk to them. It was fabulous. 